Good morning, everybody. Uh, let's go ahead and resume our adventure in Beyond the Beyond. So I have unfortunately still not actually found a good way of... Um, hmm, this is kind of loud, isn't it? That's probably better. Um, I still haven't found a good way of fast-forwarding without just holding on the 9 key, which not very useful. Hmm. Green work? Or should I go with a different color? Oh, well, green will do. So, oh, the first time on the big world map. Oh, no, it was random battle! So I'm probably going to be going through a lot of these, so... I'll go ahead and fast forward through many of them. I'm just exploring at the moment. I do know where I need to go, it's just I never go where you need to go. It's just something with me. Don't know why. Um, I'm also using this as a chance to grind to level up because Percy is still level 1, I believe. Uh, double check. I keep forgetting that they mess up what buttons are what in this game. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, Percy's still level 1, so I'd like to get him to at least something usable. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Ah, Percy's now level 2. So Percy is a lot like Mikwedka, namely he does start getting magic after a while, and it's weird magic. It's not especially useful magic, to be honest. It's mostly status effect stuff, which, just like every other RPG known to mankind, status effects never u are useful. So, here's this gate over here. This is actually the way to Bandor. Bandor is not that far away from um, Marion Castle. However, you can't actually cross this bridge for a very, very, very long time. Um, you're actually beyond the halfway point of the game by the time you can cross the bridge. So it's just sitting there taunting you. There's another one of these later on as well, except that one you actually can cross. It's a bit of a secret that you actually... Uh, it takes a really difficult battle, but if you treat them more like bosses rather than regular enemies, it's not that bad. But most people don't realize it. And in fact, the um, official guide mentions it as being impossible. It's not impossible. There actually is an impossible battle later on. Ooh, Annie leveled up. Did you get a new spell? Yes! Annie can now actually heal in combat! See? Annie! Heal and cure! So this uses um, Shining Force style spell names, which means that Heal is a healing spell and Cure is a status removal spell. It's the opposite of a Final Fantasy game. Anyway, um, Beyond the Beyond has a lot of things that weren't actually in the official FAQ, or in the official walkthrough, which is unfortunate because I actually used the official walkthrough the first time I played the game, so I didn't know about things like... Um, Let's see, what's an example of something I didn't know about? There's actually a hidden spell in the game to resurrect, for instance. That was not mentioned at all in the official guide. The other one I can think of is a spoiler, so I'm not going to bother mentioning it right now. It's one of the very few spoilers in the game itself. Ah, Percy's leveled up to three. Yay. Ah, Percy has learned Awaken. Awaken is actually a useful spell. It is a status removal spell. It removes sleep. Status effects are obnoxious in Beyond the Beyond, when used on you. Obviously, they don't work on enemies. I mean, that would just make sense. Uh, Instant Death, oddly enough, actually works very well on enemies. It's kind of strange. It works even better on you. There's a reason why there's a certain class of enemies that I will just drop everything I'm doing and try to obliterate them as though they're a boss the moment I see them. And we've got a very long time before we see those enemies, but still, new enemy. Cobalt's mm, relatively fast. And ran away. And you get nothing, because enemy ran away. Ah, oh, crap, I forgot to synchronize the microphone again, didn't I? 
Oh, well, I'll just do the same thing I did last time. Um, so, there's a slight bug with open broadcaster software, namely it needs to delay the microphone slightly in order to be able to match up with my face. Which is unfortunate, because, well, it works perfectly fine otherwise. It's kind of annoying. Ooh, monster bait! I can't remember what monster bait does now. Sounds like I'm saying masturbate. Nah, damn it! Only game that does not use triangle as a menu button, I swear. Monster bait. I have no idea what it does. And the game doesn't tell you. At all. I could look it up. I don't feel like it right now. So here's this temple that you have access to really early on. Very nice looking temple. Luckily there's a treasure chest here. Resist Jewel. That is the first of the broken items, is it? Let's see. Uh, again, it doesn't tell you. I can't remember if it's Resist Jewel or Resist Gem is the broken one. So, I mentioned this a little bit before. There is um, an exploit in the game that comes up in, well, not that much longer. Uh, basically, the exploit, what it does is, so oh, the resist items, what they normally do is they allow you for combat to ha take 50% less damage from magic. Uh, there's the one that's for the entire party, and there's one for an individual. And, well, it does exactly what it says. You take half less damage from magic, which is awesome, because magic is ludicrously overpowered in this game. The problem is that... While the group version works exactly the way it's designed, the individual version, you take 50% less damage from magic. Forever. It's obvious that's not the game, what, or the way the game was actually meant to be done. I mean, the individual one costs substantially less than the group one, after all. I'm just searching everything, you know, RPG, standard thing. Do 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 do. Antidote. Eventually, we just start getting full of antidotes and have to start wasting them left and right. Marian Church Dictionary, Volume 1, because apparently they have a lot of dictionaries. This eventually becomes a very important place, but I'm just going to go ahead and save here. I'll save a new spot, because I can. So, um, as a result, I need to decide whether I'm going to use the exploit or not. Magic is nasty in this game. You can actually have a TPK just from a single mage later on. It's obnoxious. There's no reason for it. But at the same time, if I'm playing the game as the way it's supposed to be, I should probably not be using said item. So, what do you all think? I'm currently leaning toward using the item to make the game a little bit more fun looking. I'm open to either. I've beaten the game many, many times without. Oh, hey look! Marion got taken over by Bandor! <sighs> dun dun dun! Oh no, not Prince Edward! Yes, they have confiscated all lethal weapons. However, you know, the non-lethal weapons are better than what you have. The sad thing is, they're right. You can actually come back later on after the Bandor Empire is left and they will sell real weaponry. But it's just, this is what's considered non-lethal. You notice that I don't have that much money? Yeah. This starts becoming a problem in not that long. So let's go ahead and get Annie a good weapon. Yes. See, this game, unlike Shining Force, will actually ask to immediately sell back your old weapon. It's nice. It's convenient. Unfortunately, you need to do it in the other direction, because now you notice that I have enough money for a leather plate and nothing else. Which I will go ahead and pick up for McWedka, because screw Percy. Yes, get rid of the cloth jerkin. Do, 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 do. So, you can buy, you know, 
herb, healing herb, antidote, and cure herb. So the difference between antidote and cure herb is that a cure herb will remove all status effects other than curse, and antidote will only remove poison. Hint, you're not going to get hit with any other status effects anytime soon. Uh, healing herb heals more than regular herb. At the same time, I don't have enough hit points to justify that. Instead... Now yeah, you can tell that resist jewel is worth quite a bit, actually. I think I'll go ahead and sell the monster bait. You don't want to sell sources, trust me. You want to keep them? You want to keep them as long as possible? I'm kind of tempted to use it on Annie, in fact. But I'm going to go ahead and sell the monster bait so I have enough money to buy things. That would be great. Uh, let's see, what do other people have? Seriously, you do not need antidotes. You have magic. There. I think that's enough money to be able to pick up uh, Annie's travel dress. Yep. Yep. Alright, trade in the floral dress. Um, also to explain for- oops, did not mean to hit that. To explain for those that are not familiar with Shining Games, Repair is used for um, items that you can use in combat. There are some, they don't come up anytime soon, but there are some items that you can use in combat that have an effect, but if you keep using them, they'll start breaking. Uh, later on, you will find some absurdly powerful ones. The Ocarina is the... or Ocarina, Ocarina, whatever you want to say, um, is probably the most well-known of them. Yes, you have to search in the correct order. That one is... It's an area of effect healing ability for your entire party that you can buy and repeatedly use. It's pretty awesome. Well, that's not going to work well. Everybody's worried about Prince Edward being executed. Oh no, whatever shall we do without our Prince Edward? So, um, some of the music might actually sound a little familiar to you all. There's a reason. Um, the composer that did uh, Beyond the Beyond is more well known for doing things like Valkyrie Profile and other very high profile games. Really like the composer's music, so, you know. Oh, hey, look, that doesn't look suspicious at all. There's nothing out of the ordinary there. Nothing at all, even though you can see an outline around the tile. It's totally normal. So, I'd like to mention how screwed up this is. Prince Edward is a young teenager. He's about the same age as Annie and Mikwetka. Empire invades, takes over your castle, and because a legendary hero is hiding out, they execute a 13-year-old. Really? Th this is not Game of Thrones here. Come on. You don't need to execute everyone on the face of the planet. He's hiding somewhere in town. Welcome to Samson. So remember that little um, underline that you saw? Yeah, um, that was where Samson was hiding. And Samson's pretty awesome right now. He has some pretty badass lines. Yeah, Bender's kind of afraid of Samson, and there's good reason at the moment. Oh yeah, he's supposed to sound all badass. Yeah, apparently on cutscene power he can one-shot kill pretty much anything. It's weird. I don't quite understand that, to be honest, but, well, you know, whatever. Hint! That's where I'm supposed to go, so I'm not going there. I'm searching every single vase. Just 
just want to be like Samson when I grow up. No, no, you don't, kid. Trust me, you want to be substantially better than Samson. So remember, Samson's known for his strength. This is totally not a reference to anything whatsoever, biblically or anything like that. Nope. Ah, the bridge is Algun. That's a hint. Ah, uh, Zeal. Also, different areas. And Iridia, because that totally sounds like a continent name. Traveling poet. Yeah, I, really, people don't have anything useful to say. I'm mostly doing this for everybody else's benefit that hasn't played the game many times. This is the other reason why I needed money. It's because you want to stay at inns. Alright, now let's go boogie. Uh, my cats are playing as usual. Hey, look. Here lies Darren. Here lies Tobin. Hunter. Yeah, I don't understand all of the weird names. Oh, but this tombstone? There's nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, my cats are fighting each other again. Nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing out of the ordinary. So, you know, there's only like two tombstones that actually have anything, apparently. I don't understand at all. Maybe they're testers? However, that one has a ring of defense. So, a ring of defense is the first item that you get that actually does something useful. Uh, as in, you can use it in combat if I remember correctly. Go ahead and equip it on the Quedka. Uh, it's. I. I think only McWedka can use it. Let me double check that really fast. Give. Nope, Annie can also use it. And Percy. So it's going to Annie. Trust me, you, you want Annie with good defense. She's a healer after all. Blum. So hey, look. Yes, we'll totally flip the switch. And then you go back out. And back over to the graveyard, which has mysteriously been emptied out. And oh, hey, look, stairwell underneath a grave. Nobody would have ever suspected that. That's not in, you know, every video game RPG ever or anything. Bam! Non-random battle! Real bats, not small bats. So, I don't know if you've noticed, but you can only target based off of a group. So, in other words, when I tell Percy to attack, Percy attacks the group of bat, not an individual bat. This is where some of the issues with the battle system start going on, because your characters are sometimes really stupid. Really, really stupid. Yeah, Percy looks awkward when attacking no matter what he does. It's kind of funny. And yes, you notice that Annie is doing more damage than Percy. Already. It's not that I didn't buy Percy a new weapon. There was a new weapon for Percy. Annie is actually that strong, if I remember right. Criticals, on the other hand, are much better on Percy. Uh, let's double check that really fast. Status. So Percy has an attack of 18, Annie has an attack of 18, and McWedka has an attack of 21. Now, admittedly, Annie is one level higher than Percy, but, um, yeah, I don't get it. So luck, by the way, the luck stat determines critical hit chance. So McWedka actually has one of the highest luck stats in the game, if I remember correctly. I think the only one higher is Samson, but I'm not sure on that. We'll, we'll check when we get him. Oh no, I just spoiled the fact that we're going to have Samson in our party at some point. Because that wasn't damn obvious. Uh, three bats. 
sure. Use magic. See if I care. That is fire one. Very impressive, I know. Miguetica doesn't really have anything else to do with MP right now, so it's not that big of a deal. Bats are annoying, by the way. Yes, so on critical hits, bats can actually cause characters to fall asleep. Oh, hey, look! Percy has magic, but no MP. Damn it, game. I actually can't do anything about that sleep as a result. Oh well. She'll wake up eventually. Hopefully the snores won't annoy you, because you can hear her snore. You notice that she's still asleep after being attacked, so... Sleep in this game is basically you have a random chance of waking up. If you don't wake up by yourself, you don't wake up. Until end of battle. It's basically paralyze. Only your defense drops, if I remember right. It's obnoxious. I don't understand why they would do such a thing. Hey look, Percy leveled up. He still has no MP. But at least he's finally a higher strength than Annie. Oh wait, nope, same strength again. And Annie has MP. <sighs> Let's just say this game's not very balanced and leave it at that. The stone is blocking our path. Huh. Of course we should try. One, two, three, push. We're pretty awesome like that. I don't know why that's in this, to be honest, because it's not like that really did anything, and not like you ever have to do something similar again, if I remember right. You do have to push things, but maybe that's just to introduce the fact that there's sliding block puzzles in this game? Oh. No, okay. Hey, look, it's Samson. Yeah, I don't know why Samson doesn't look anything like any of the other members of the army. I, I don't know. Seems I'm on my own then. By the way, who are your little kids behind you? Oh, well, you see. This is my sister Annie. She's totally in a dress. And this is Mikwedka! Lord Kevin's son. Don't ask why it's Mikwedka. Huh? So, Samson is actually afraid of Mikwedka. It's kind of funny. There's every reason in the world for him to be afraid of Mikwedka, though. Oh yeah, uh, Mikwedka, yeah, it's been a while. Uh -huh. Naturally, I mean, what else do heroes do? I knew it! It, this is not exactly that, you know, unconventional of a game, people. The prince must be saved! I've never met the prince before in my life, but he must be saved! Such brave youngsters! Please follow me! So, we get to experience the only time in the game that Samson is actually useful. Because he is the worst character in the game otherwise, and I do mean worst. I don't believe there is anybody at all that is worse than Samson. But for the time being... See, Samson's already level 15, and I'm actually going to make sure that I take a screenshot of this. This screen right here, because we'll compare later on when Samson's level 15 again, hint, and see how he compares, because, um, he's bad. Really bad. Screenshot, there we go. Okay. Formation. Uh, 
Uh, McWedka. Annie gets to go to the back. Percy and Samson. Wait, actually, hold on. I just realized. I hate dealing with Percy. Um, Percy is 21 attack, 11 defense. Annie is better than Percy in attack and defense. And the same speed. So I should actually put Percy in the back rather than Annie. This is what I mean by frontline Annie. Annie becomes very, very good at being a frontline character very fast. Get back here. Hey, look, it's a Bandor soldier that's stuck in the prison. Who apparently, you know, just got drunk off his butt and started... I, I don't get it. Maybe this is a reference to something. So. Let's see. Come down here. I want to talk to you. There he is. That is Prince Edward. If you can't tell from his sprite, he is also a playable character. We don't have the rebellious princess type, we have the rebellious prince type in this game. And I will admit, that is a little different compared to normal, but... Yep, we need to get the key. Let's take it by surprise. One, two, three. Roar! We're going to run in and be on the opposite side of the stable. So, this is the first Bandor Soldier battle. You will see a crap ton of these in the game. And I do mean a crap ton. However, these are the incredibly weak soldiers. So apparently when Bandor invades this strange nation, all they do is send their crappiest soldiers along. I don't know why. They just do. So really, Samson can take on everybody by himself right now with his level. Yeah, 44. In a game where 99 is max, he's already doing nearly 50% of his actual maximum uh, damage capacity. The problem is that this is pretty much the last time you see him start doing damage like this. And he does have a really high critical rate. That is nice. Hey look, I gained a prison key! I'll never leave this prison alive! Oh hey look, we got a door to slam on you. So ha! That's right, do I actually have to use the prison key? Yes. The gate opens! I'm here, Edward. Plunk. <sighs> oh, physical combat. Or physical violence. I thought I was dead for sure, but I knew I had to find some way to save Marion. You'll make a strong young man. You'll make a very good king one day. Hop, hop. I'll personally make sure that happens. By killing your father. Okay. I, I don't think we ever actually see the prince's relatives. So, nobody actually knows where to go from here. But apparently we're going to go to Zalgoon. Yep. Apparently, um, just like the royalty in Europe, all of the royalty of all of the nations of this continent are actually related to each other. Edward joins the party. Which is good, because Edward is actually a good character, unlike Samson. Who has still not officially joined the party, may I note. Yeah, why are you taking up the rear? You're you're not taking the rear. That that just sounds wrong, one, and two, no. Frontline Annie. So, Edward is a wizard. Um, he is our first offensive mage, first of two or three, depending on how you count it. And his stats are terrible. His attack is six. Man, note that everybody else's attack, other than Samson, are 21. This is 6. I don't get this. At all. His IQ is also really low, too, which is weird, given that he's a mage. 
But on the plus side, he has that lovely fire one spell. Yeah. Edward is going to suck for a while. There's nothing we can do about Edward sucking. So remember what I said about, you know, that being the last time that Samson's going to be useful? But Bandor Fool dares to interfere with us! Welcome to one of the major bosses of the game. Ramu is an extremely powerful summoner. Um, you usually don't fight her until much later on in the game. For reals, so to speak. But you can actually fight her a little bit later. I'll show you, I believe, this video, actually. Uh, maybe next video. Not sure which. Her face is creepy, though. It always looks to me, even though I know her lips are closed, it looks like she's grinning at me. I don't know why. Man, finish him! What? Ha! Qua! Yes, apparently Samsung knows Kung Fu. And could, you know, flip people up in the air many stories. Boom. She's a mage, if you can't tell. This is apparently what battles look like outside of the weird battle interface. Well, how about this? A cursed shawl! Oh, hey, look! The cursed shawl was above his head. He gets zapped. So that ditty means that he's cursed. In... Shining Force terms, cursed items, basically what they do is they always have some type of evil description, like evil ring, or dark sword, or things like that. And you, when you equip them, you are unable to unequip them, and you are cursed. Cursed has a variety of different status effects, including making you lose your turn, making you hit yourself, um... I think those are the two major things. And, well... Samson is now cursed. Permanently. Not only is he cursed, his stats just dropped, and he's now down to level 1, if I remember right. It might be level 3. We'll find out. Uh... Yeah, that's why he's purple also. He's level 1, with 11 attack. His attack is 10 lower than McWedka. His attack is only 5 higher than Edward, who is also level 1. And he's down to 10 hit points max. It, his stats suck. And it never really gets any better. Um, the way the game handles his stats being the suck is not that his stats are actually lower from the curse status effect. It's the fact that his... Um, whatchamacallit? Um, his stat growth is much lower than normal up until about level 30. The problem being is that you're probably around level 40 when you beat the game, and you're substantially higher than 30 by the time that you get him uncursed. Yes, let's split into two groups. That sounds like an awesome idea. Why in the world would we do that? That's incredibly dumb. I should have grabbed everything off of them, but doesn't matter. None of their items are all that useful. We'll be waiting at the border church. That was the church I went to earlier. I don't want to go through there. Show this to the pastor. I have a royal pendant! Key item. Uh, this is the suck part of the game. Oh, I forgot to move Percy back in the front line. Oh well. I'll do that now. Basically the idea is that if you're in the front line, you do normal damage and you take normal damage. If you're in the rear, you take 50% less damage, but you also do 50% less damage. So what you normally want to do is put mages in the rear. The problem is that Annie is just as powerful as Percy, and I hate Percy. Thus, Frontline Annie. Boom, 
Boom. Oh, killer bees. They can poison. They didn't. Everything's good. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you the bridge that's down here. You know, another one of those you can't pass bridges. Killer frogs! Empty vase, as usual. Is this one also empty? Yeah. Uh, damn it! And banned our troops. So yeah, they block off the bridge to Zalgun. Um, it's eventually not blocked off. Eventually. Really long eventually. You have the most epic of soap quests, basically. Um, it's not quite soap, you're not handing an item off back and forth, back and forth, but you have to do a lot of things in order to be able to get back to here later on. So. Let's save first. Yes. Item! Royal Pendant. Use. Are you Mikwedka? Of course I am. Who else would have such a strange name? Prince Edward, Sir Samson, I've been waiting for you. Please go right ahead. So, this is a sliding block puzzle. You're late, Mikwedka. I can't figure out the riddle. You must crown Venus' brow with a laurel and tiara. But it also says, when she smiles upon the world, you will be one step closer to Arun. This is why I said it doesn't particularly matter. So yes, technically I can actually reset all of that and f be able to um, figure out exactly where to do the sliding blocks at. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this here and then start recording once the sliding block puzzle is done. However, there was something I wanted to show you first before I stopped recording. So, you know, sliding block puzzle, doors. So what, pray tell, happens if you try to leave? This. Oh, hey, look, the pastor's dead. So, in theory, this is an impossible boss battle. I don't believe it actually is possible at all, especially since, you know, Edward's level 1 and Samson's level 1. And, well, you'll see Remu... Remu is substantially weaker than what she is when you actually fight her later on, but, well... She's still not somebody you want to fight. I might be able to take on an Orc Lord at this rate. Maybe, and I don't think I can. I'm pretty sure I'm still dead. Also, Remu goes multiple times in a row. Potentially. Fire Drake! Oh, hey, look! I killed- I have three of my characters groggy, that was the term. Oh hey look, Ramu's going again! And an orc's going. Hey look, my entire party's groggy. So this is what happens when you recover from grogginess. You lose LP, but you gain BP back. But you also lose your turn in order to do so. Yeah, it's not actually possible for you to win this fight, to my knowledge. I'm kind of curious to see if she has hit points. I honestly don't know. Oh, hey, look, Samson's dead and apparently gets bisected as a result. 
But Percy can actually go! And do nothing. I think you get the idea. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this here. Um, I'll be right back. You know what's awesome? Forgetting to actually enable the microphone while you do all of this. So I just recorded the last part of this video. Didn't realize the entire time that I did not have any audio whatsoever except for what was coming from the game. Go me. So I'm actually just going to redo the last 10 minutes of this. This wasn't that bad. I actually wrote down uh, general notes as to what I need to do for the sliding box puzzle, at least. Let's see if I can remember my notes, because I did this flawlessly once, which means I'm going to screw it up now. <laughs> oh, that's... Uh, two, four. Okay, I'm in the right spot now. I would do this sped up, except that I end up jumping over everything. It's just not useful whatsoever. I apologize. Okay, so we're going to add to this. Yeah, that looks correct. Then we're going to bring this up. We're here. And like this. We're here. that. Okay. And then bring all of this up. This down. And then I think, yeah. And this is it for the sliding block puzzle. Hooray! This time with actual microphone! <laughs> now McWedgig gets to lead the way. This is the last time Samson ever tries to lead anything. And yeah, the priest is back, so apparently if you complete the puzzle, the priest gets to live. If you don't complete the puzzle, the priest dies. Even though it took me longer to complete the puzzle than it was the run. I I don't get it. And I am saving again, thank you very much, even if it's just a save state. And also, while I'm at it, Percy, you're a piece of crap. I don't want you to have these things. At all. Because you know what? Percy can go die in a fire. Such a pretty chamber, and there's nothing here at all. So this dungeon's kind of weird in that there's actually a second passage through here. You just can't access it this early in the game. And, well, that second passage has a lot of interesting things in it. None of which are actually useful. Or, that's badly phrased. None of which are actually required in the game. There's no reason at all to have to go there. It's just kind of like if they forgot to have a side quest there. Anyway, the item that I just picked up is a Blizzard card. What Blizzard's cards do is that they're a one-use item that casts... I believe that one is Ice 3. Alright, now you get to see why exactly I emptied Percy out of items. Oh yeah, I need to change the font color. So as I found out in the previous load, it's the same color as poison, so you can't tell if a party member is poisoned or not. Go me. Oh well. And if you wonder why the camera's at a different angle, um, Zone actually knocked the camera right at the end of the last video. Yep, that's right. Percy's making a senseless sacrifice for absolutely no reason. Of course, they could have ran away during this entire conversation, and this conversation's pretty long. But no. No, Percy's going to make a senseless sacrifice for absolutely no reason. Dun dun dun. And then... Yeah, snap! Which apparently takes so much force he gets launched across the room and smacked and... Yeah. <sighs> this game is not known for good plot. 
Not at all. And Annie has now lost her brother. Sad. By the way, I looked it up. Edward is actually 13. It's the same age as Annie. They were going to execute a 13-year-old to bring a hero out of hiding. Yeah, they really like using the uh, playing the villain card, don't they? That was a foolish, but extremely brave thing to do! No, that was an idiotic thing to do. Percy's an idiot. Complete and total idiot. Well, yes. Alright, I'm going to fast forward through this because there's a whole lot of not talking. They nod. A lot. There. This, um, the first time I recorded this was just barely below an hour, so I'm hoping to be able to get slightly shorter. Um, my goal for all of these is roughly one hour. I'm doing this based off of plot location, and I'm going to stop at the inn at the crossroads. Ah, crap, I got ambushed. Oh, so I figured out a way of toggling the frame skip, so this is a little bit better now. Do it, do 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 do. I need to heal Annie. So, um, interesting fact: Samson actually requires more experience to level than Edward. He is really worthless all around, isn't he? Also, that is not the same stats that Edward got last time. It's interesting. Makes me wonder how random the game really is. Um, the sliding block puzzle was completely random, by the way. Why am I doing that? I've got magic. Herb. Yeah, there's only like one other item in this entire dungeon, if I remember right. And it's right over here, because I just went through this, so I don't have to go bumbling around. Unfortunately, that means I'm lower level than I was before. It's a source of agility, so let's go ahead and use some of these sources, shall we? Oh, it increased five points last time. Sad. Well, that was worthless. Oh well. So, what Samson's curse actually does, because I explained this, I just don't know me, I explained this in the last video and nobody heard me. Um, Samson's curse does one of two things. One, it can either immobilize him, where he doesn't get to move, doesn't get to act, and just sits there and does nothing like a worthless lump that he is. Or the other thing, which is that he takes 50% of the damage that he deals in a single action. What that means is that, say for instance, if I attack, if attack normally, I do 5 damage, I take 3. If, say for instance, I get a critical hit and do 10 damage, I take 5. If I get a double attack, criti double critical hit, I do 10 damage twice and take 5 damage twice. If, say, my attack was increased and I get a double damage critical hit, I deal 13 damage twice that means I receive, that would be seven damage twice, killing Samson. Samson is a worthless piece of crap. I forgot to change the color of everything, so I can tell if people are poisoned. Liquid leveled up, though. That's always good. We always want Liquid to level up, and Edward leveling up, too. Uh, let's quickly change that... I got it to that. Congratulations, you're gonna get to see brownish orange-ish thing. That's right, I need to go to the left. Green slime! That's new. Yeah, they, this game really likes palette swapping, by the way. Yeah, Samson doing one damage. Oh, I forgot to move him to the front. No wonder he did one damage. He's not quite that bad. Actually, he is. He's worse than that, but whatever. Hmm. Prepare. Formation! One, two, three, four. Keep wanting to hit that. Let's go pick up the priest. Hello! That is Brother Thomas! He was meditating in these caves and couldn't find his way out. 
I think he is an idiot, given how easy these caves are. And this is this game is very well known for its maze dungeons. This is not a maze dungeon. This is actually fairly linear. Ah, uh, more mold. Oh yeah, and they surprise us again, because Samson is so ridiculously slow. I think it's based off of that, at least. Do -do 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 -do. Yes, I am actually keeping track of everybody's hit points, by the way. Uh, sure, let's have Annie do some more healing for Edward. Oh, I guess he was only down half. Keep forgetting how bad these characters are this early in the game. And Nikwetka. Samson can die, I don't care. He's worthless anyway. I, I do mean linear cave. That's it to the cave. Seriously, game. To hell. Okay. I'm just going to the inn, resting and saving. Ah, yes, yeah, so you get to see the dramatic irony. So apparently those are orcs. I, I don't... They don't look anything like orcs. And really, Shabu and... Ramu, sorry, not Shamu. Uh, Ramu and really all of the villains of Bandor love holding the villain ball. They just do things for the evils for no other reason, and yes, I use lots of TV tropes vocabulary. It ruins my vocab. No need. Preventing Prince Edward from getting to Zalgun would be a waste of effort. Even if they make it to Zalgun, they will not get us any assistance there. <laughs> Very stereotypical game. This has two things here. Clear water and wine. See? Wine. Mm, I'm hiccuping. I keep forgetting to drink things. Yeah, I had over a hundred more gold than this time, so I'm pretty sure I'm about a full level off of where I was before. Oh well. I'll still keep the save, otherwise it'll look really weird if I merge this with the other one. Welcome. How can I, a servant Avrind, help you today? I'd like to save my game. Yes, please subscribe my adventure. I noticed that I already have a save here. Oh well, doesn't matter. Nope, oh, damn it. Let's try that again. Save. Yes. There. Yes. Alright, and I will go ahead and keep it from here. I just wanted to see if it was actually any faster or slower. Yep, five minutes faster. Woo. Okay, I will keep it here. I'll see you next video. Bye! And stop.